if you're in touch with Devi, after that energy's turning negative for you doesn't happen. Such things will have no influence on a person who's truly meditative. The more mentally, emotionally distracted and unfocused you are, the more you are susceptible to these forces. There are people manipulating energies to cause harm to somebody. People can even cause death like this. In certain parts of India, it's very prevalent. One, one Veda among the four Vedas, the Atharvana Veda, is dedicated to this as to how to manipulate energy for your well being in somebody's system. <clears throat> these energies or these kind of practices need not necessarily be directed at you. Right now, if somebody is doing something negative to me, if I am not receptive to it, you are sitting here, you may get it. It's very much possible. It's like uh, somebody is shooting at each other on the street, you are just walking on the street and you may get shot. So, Certain practices, if you bring in certain practices or certain utterances into day-to-day -day life, one can easily tide over these things. Rudraksh as a seed, this tree mainly grows at certain altitude. Somewhere between 6,500 to 12,000 altitude is where Rudraksh grows in the Himalayan region. And uh, it has very unique vibrations. So person who is constantly traveling wears a Rudraksh so that he has a cocoon of his own energy that the outside energies does not disturb him. He, he has a… we call this a kavacha. You know what's a kavacha? It's more like a cocoon. It's a cocoon of your own energy Wherever you go, you have your private bedroom going with you. <laughs> it travels with you wherever you go. For people who are in family and social situations, the best thing to wear is always the fire-faced Rudraksh. It is best that it is given to you by somebody who knows what it is. Simply buying it off the shelf from in some shop and wearing it is not a good thing. Normally, the Rudraksh that you find here is always sourced through… There are families who have been dealing with Rudraks for thousands of years, the same family. They hold it as a sacred duty, it's not just business for them. There's another seed called Badraksh, which grows extensively in the northern plains of India, which is a poisonous seed, which looks exactly like this. And especially for the western tourists in India, now we are making very nice plastic Rudraksh, <laughs> which looks wonderful, better than this, but it's plastic with rocks, okay? <laughs> so, uh, it is best that it is always taken through a known source, otherwise all kinds of things will come. I see today, a uh, lot of uh, this, um, for lack of vocabulary I'm saying, this new age type of people, they're all wearing metal rings on their thumb. See, uh, if you put a metal ring on your thumb, you will inevitably draw certain negative forces towards you. It does not mean you will be necessarily possessed, but uh, you will trip and fall for nothing, all kinds of things will happen, everything goes wrong, simple things. I don't know if you've met people or you have been one of them at some time, where when things start going wrong, they go wrong in a series, serial… serial trippings, not one or two, simply it keeps happening, everything and everything goes wrong <laughs> from small things to big things, simply because uh, they would have attracted certain dimensions of energy which could which is not conducive for doing anything in the world, but it could be conducive to do something else. Only those who want to do occult practices would wear a ring on the thumb. 
But today, either out of ignorance or fashion, once you put metal on the thumb, you're inviting this. There are hundreds of people who think they are possessed and all this and we just tell them, you come and sit in the sphere of Dhyanalinga because there are occult dimensions to Dhyanalinga which just nullifies all this. They go out completely free because the occult dimensions are taken care of in the Dhyanalingam area. One Pavnami or Amavasya when you things are more receptive for you, just one day just sit there and go. If you are in touch with Devi either in the form of Yantra or in whichever way, the yantra is in your hands or it's in your heart, it's up to you. Once you are wrapped in the energy that we are referring to as Devi or Bhairavi, after that energy is turning negative for you doesn't happen. So, if you just make sure you are eating the right kind of food, you are keeping your system well, the chances of you getting messed up because of some other energy or something should be completely out of your life. That Devi will take care. If you are truly meditative, don't even bother about occult. Such things will have no influence on a person who is truly meditative. If you have no… if you know at least a little bit of silence in you, at least few moments of silence in you in a day, you don't worry about occult. Such things cannot impact a person who knows the stillness of his inner being. Someone said, man is ill only because he doesn't know how to be still. It's perfectly correct. It's perfectly right. All the illnesses have happened because they don't know how to be still, especially those which affect your mind, especially those which happen because of other influences. These things are possible only because there is no stillness. So right now with the process of meditation, you are bringing that stillness into your life. If you are still, you will not be ill. Above all, keeping yourself, the more mentally, emotionally distracted and unfocused you are, the more you are susceptible to these forces. If you are in a certain level of focus and determination, you will see these things may just… they may be like a small road, a bump in the road, they won't be a crash. But uh, if you're in a certain level of destabilization in your emotion and mind, it could lead to a crash.